everyone and welcome to two tutorial tuesday this is amy with seriously sweet and cookie snack attack if you haven't signed up for text alerts before our live streams please do that by texting the word live stream to 540-870-0726 how is everyone today i hope you are all doing absolutely fantastic i am doing wonderful I had a fantastic weekend. I got to play with a gadget that I used to use for card making. I'm gonna tell you all about that, show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna create some really cool cookies. And don't forget this Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Easter box is released for sale. And I think it, there might be 42 instead of 40. I'm just double checking the last few supplies that have arrived. And I think I might have enough to do 42 boxes. Also, if you're just tuning in, please don't forget we had a fabulous drawing provided to us by Timbo. So excited about this. He has a fantastic Valentine box out with these beautiful Valentine teddy bear cookies. And uh, it's class in a box. So the tutorials were pre recorded and they come with the box. And tonight, during our 7 p.m. stream, we will be doing the drawing for that. The way you were entered into that, it was a gift for the people that took it, was a gift from Timbo to use as a giveaway for our Valentine class that was this past Saturday. So if you are on and you took the class on Saturday or you did the replay later, I'm sure you followed the instructions to get your appropriate number of entries. Just so you know, I don't know who the winner is yet. I haven't done the randomizer, but I've entered all the names. I'm going to attempt to do a screen share tonight so that you guys can see that when I'm doing it, but we'll see if that works or not. So super excited. As soon as we have our winner, you'll message me the address where you would like your box mailed and Timbo is going to send the box directly to you. And then you will get your information on how to view the pre-recorded tutorials. And oh my gosh, they're so cute. You know how he always does the really gruesome, intricate, gory things. This is is totally early teddy bears and pink runneth over. I was so excited when I saw it pop up. So thank you, Timbo. If you see this later, the ladies of Cookie Snack Attack and the gents too, I'm sure just love you. We all try to take every class you offer and we appreciate you so much in giving us a fr prize for our Valentine class participants. It's so exciting. All right, so let me jump up here to comments and get caught up really quick. 
I think. Aren't they so cute, Debbie? Oh, hey, and if you didn't get a chance to watch last week, I think last week was the first week that we started qualifying as a creator to receive stars. Stars are a digital tip through Facebook. Um, and it's just fun to see the little flashes on the screen. But you guys have been so, so generous. I just want to take a minute to tell you thank you. Apparently, that little message even pops up during replays. And you guys have been sending stars during replays, too. And I just wanted to tell you thank you so much because it's allowing me more time to focus on this part of my business, which is content creating and teaching free tutorials and prepping for classes and designing sets for you and all the stuff that just makes me so happy. All right, I'm going to pop up here and let's let's go through some coupon um, or messages rather. One of the things that we're going to be doing today is you embossed parchment squares to create a super powerful wow factor on your cookies that you can do ahead of time so you don't have so much detail piping to do. They really have an incredible look. They, you do them a day ahead of time, let it set up, trim out your icing if there's any overflow, and then a little bit of dry dusting. And they just add so much as your background scenery type cookies to an order. So I'm gonna tell you all about how that got started and what we're going to do with that in our group. But I want to say hello to a few people first and let you know I did drop in a link for the parchment squares that I use. There are many, many different types that work. I'll tell you where you can find out all that information. Um, but I did drop the link in for the ones that I'm using today just so I don't forget later. And it'll pop up, I believe, as a live link on the Facebook feed once the broadcast is over, okay? Mimi, thank you. Mimi just sent stars. I'm trying to figure out how I can make that show on this screen because I'm supposed to be able to flash that onto my stream yard when I'm broadcasting, but I haven't quite got that down yet. But Mimi, I can see you. Hey, Mary Lynn, how are you? All right, so let's say hello. I flashed up a lot of hellos from everyone earlier, so I just want to get caught up with the comments. I know, Becky, this is going to be so much fun. And as always, guys, you really help a gal out when you share the broadcast. So if you feel like doing that to your personal pages or business pages to bring some more people into our cookie fun, it's always very, very, very much appreciated. All right. I'm excited. Let's see. Oh, and don't forget, you guys, subscribe to that YouTube channel. That way, if there's ever a glitch on our main location, which is our Facebook group and our Facebook page for Cookie Snack Attack and then Seriously Sweet on Davis Street. If there's ever a glitch, you can um, still catch us live on YouTube because StreamYard's, uh, StreamYard allows me to broadcast to all of those platforms at the same time. That way you won't have to wait for the replay, okay? Hello, hello. You're freezing. I know you guys, we're going to get more bad weather um, I'm so sorry you're cold. We're going to get more bad weather on Friday. And I think this time, to me, it's kind of looking like it's going to be snow ice mixture. Hey, Sally, how are you? Those were some beautiful New Year's Chinese New Year cookies that you did. Love the design. Kat, hello. How are you? Hi, Sharon. Hi, Nicole. Hey, Judy, you made it. Yay. Um, box, box. Kathy's asking about the box. I'm going to do the box reveal on Friday. I'll try to do it early in the afternoon so that you have plenty of time to catch the replay. You'll have, I'm going to try to do it by three. So you'll have 24 hours to catch the replay. And it's a great box. You guys, it's loaded. We're going to be doing four designs, but we're going to do, there are four cutters but we're going to be doing five or six cookies. I haven't nailed down the last two yet. There's going to be a couple that I'm going to tell you make extra cookies of this shape because there's other things in the box that you're going to be able to do that you can do for level up. So you'll be making more than four cookies for the class, but there are four cutters in your box. And they're going to be fantastic for those of you who are going to be creating either DIY kits, PYOs for the kids, or creating um, cookies by the dozen for Easter. So I'm very excited that you're going to have that in your hot little hands well before Easter so you can start planning and creating your own designs. Hey, Nimrose, how are you? Let's get your co-workers hooked on cookie decorating. <laughs> hey, Debbie. 
Well, I sure hope. Um, yeah, I know he does look like a big teddy bear, doesn't he? <laughs> so, hey, Maxine, how are you? Hello, hello. Good morning, Facebook user. How are you? Hi, Karen. Hi, Priscilla. All right, I think we're caught up with everybody. Um, let's see. Hi, Myra. How are you? Um, Barbara, we're going to talk about which machine I used in just a minute. Hello, Holly. 27 in Ohio. I feel very blessed today. It's 45 here. It was super cold last night, but it's warming up nicely. Hello, Miss Julie. You're on a live. I can't believe it. Cold and rainy, but no snow. I'm sorry, Nicole. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully the replay will be better, but I am showing um, full strength on my broadcasting right now. No, don't avert your eyes, Sally, because you're probably going to get addicted. Just saying. So, guys, I used to make these when I was in Florida. I had a gift shop and it was coastal in theme. And I used to make these beautiful gift cards, these six inch by six inch gift cards to sell in my shop. And so I have a couple of embossing machines. You're showing up, Julie. You're showing up. I just said hi. And I posted your earlier comment, too. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Paula. Oh, that sounds very cold, Paula. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That sounds terrible. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, this Facebook user, your name's not showing up. Is this Cindy? Cindy has trouble from one of her devices. Tell me if it's you. If it's you, just type your name and then I'll know it's you. Okay, so let's jump into what we're doing today. Um, there is a company and I'd like to refer you to them to make some purchases because their items are absolutely wonderful and it's called Intricate Edibles. They sell beautiful DD double density wafer paper embellishments for cookies and a while back they added um <clears throat> they added uh parchment sheets, embossed parchment sheets to their lineup. And you can get those items through Bees Baked Art when they're available. Some, sometimes they're out of stock. So it just, it's, you have to just keep checking the site and then checking the places that sell them. And they have really nice designs. Now, if you are a crafter and you happen to have an embossing machine, recently Nancy Westfall of the Colorful Cookie Club did a very in depth tutorial for her Cookie Club members where she broke down, um, how to actually do it, how to stack your plates, um, <clears throat> uh, which machines. I think she did it on a couple of different machines. And before Nancy did that, I had to discover how to create my own parchment sheets because I need them for my cookie con cookies. So when we got back from cookie con, I started playing with a machine I had. I hadn't seen anyone using this machine. And what I have is a, is a Spellbinders Grand Caliber Platinum. And I have both the really large machine, which has like an eight and a half inch wide bed. And I have the mini, which is more like the Cuddlebug or the Sizzix machine, where it has a smaller um, folder. I prefer to do what I did for today's class on the smaller machine. It just seems to work better for me. Um, I love the Platinum because they had a lot of upgrades. Um, I, I had my red Grand Caliber machine. I think I've owned it for maybe 15 years. Um, I had to replace it once because some of the, the, the red one, you guys, if anybody has that, the guts on the red one were made with plastic and I did cards. So obviously I was always trying to push the boundaries on how thick of a paper product I could get through there for these intricate cards that I used to make. So I had to replace the guts a few times. The company was great to work with. I broke my handle at one point, but then um, I think five years ago, they came out with the platinum machine and the platinum machine is absolutely fantastic. The gears are metal. The turn part for the handle is metal. Like it's just a super heavy duty embossing machine and it's fantastic. But since we've come home to Virginia, I don't make cards for the shop anymore because it's just too time consuming with all of the baking that we started doing right away when we opened Seriously Sweet. So I've had the machine. I love the machines. Um, the large one I used quite a bit for cards before we came home. The small one had never been out of the box. So when I got back from Cookie Con and I started working on my, when I found out I was going to be an electives teacher, I have to bring um, 
90 cookies and part of my cookie has to already be done or we won't have time to finish the mixed medium cookie in class. And one of the things I wanted to demo during my class was using this parchment paper technique. You know, we have used it quite often. Um, everybody has used it quite often for quite a long time to do things like stone textures, a concrete texture, to fold it so that you can make your cupcake outline cookies, make a cupcake liner for the bottom so it has the indentions. So there was a lot of uses that we were using parchment paper for to create texture and dimension on our decorated sugar cookies. So this is just next level of that. So I have a Platinum Spellbinder the Mini. It's like, a, I think it says number six on it. And I have all new plates. Everything's totally new, never been used in any other manner just for this. And when I got back, I had happened to have a wood grain um, embossing plate. So I started playing with the wood grain to, to use on my key. That's how I got into this. And then I just kind of set it aside because I had what I needed for cookie con. And then when I was watching all the fun stuff that Nancy was doing, I was like, oh, God, the bug has bit me. I have to break that out and try all the embossing folders that I bought for card making that I never used. And there are a lot of them because I was really into making cards for the stores. But sometimes you'd buy sets of embossing plates. And I was in Florida. So like when the snow stuff came or the wintry Christmas stuff came, it wasn't really useful for me. So I had this whole stack of things that are perfect for this time of year. So I took Sunday afternoon and I, I put up my first reel ever. It's not great lighting, but my, um, my hubby helped me. Wait, wait, what does this say? Let me see if I can see what this says. Oh, Myra, we'll catch you later. And thank you for the stars. Oh, my goodness, Myra, that's so generous. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. And I'm going to figure out how to show that in the stream so that um, I can let people know. That's super generous. Thank you. Hey, Nadine. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? So the embosser Maxine that I'm using is Spellbinders, all one word, Grand Caliber Platinum. And it's the one that's upgraded that has all the metal gears and parts inside. So it's it's going to be really difficult to break it. And um, I tend to break things. So I needed the heavier duty machine. So that's what's so fun about this. So then after I saw Nancy's video and Nancy was like, your club people would like this. Now, I don't want to teach that because Nancy teaches that in her group. But I want to show you how it's useful. So those of you that have the machines um, might think about using this as a way to bring in that extra wow factor to your cookie sets. Because we're always trying to balance our cookie sets where they some of the cookies look super intricate, but they don't take as much time so that we can spend more time on ones that we want to sculpt or do additional painting on things like that. So we've always got to balance it so that our time and profitability line up so that we're not losing money when we're making cookies, right? It's a hard enough margin anyway, because it's cookies and you often have time, a hard time showing people where the value is in it. Like some people just really get it and they appreciate it and it's edible art. And other people are like, yeah, it's just a cookie. Well, maybe that's not really the kind of cookie they're after, right? So I just want to show you a way that you can up that wow factor again. So this weekend, I took some extra cookies that I have and planned a few things for these cookies. So I have these cool trees and I have the, just this large square cookie that I have left. They didn't need to be anything fancy, but they happen to work. I'm just reusing cookies that I had because this whole month has been more about creating the texture than the actual shape of the cookie, although everything has lent itself very well to Valentine's Day. But today we're going to take a little departure and go winter wonderland, okay? So if you are in Nancy Westfall's The Colorful Cookie Group, please check out her tutorial where she does a very extensive display of, of tutorial rather. She does a very extensive tutorial <clears throat> on using the embossing machines. And she does demos, I believe in the video, they're mainly on the Sizzix machine. I have, because I already previously owned it, the Spellbinders Grand Caliber Platinum Mini the six. So I had these plates, never used them, sanitized them, and then got to work. And I used Zenlogi parchment 
And I happen to have five by five inch squares in hand. The link I put up for you is four by four because that will fit most of the embossing folders. So I created these cool snow people and then I got this snowflake design out. Aren't these beautiful? Look at the detail in these. And then I also had this one. I'm not as in love with this one, but we're going to see if it works because I have a feeling once it's on the cookie and the icing is dry and I buff it tonight in the second part of our tutorial, when I buff these and do the dry dusting, I have a feeling that this one's going to be quite beautiful. It's spruce trees with snowflakes mixed in. So we might buff this in two colors. So each of these, you guys, when I ran it through my machine, um, it made 12. I could do 12 at a time without busting the parchment. There were some designs that the, the folders, the embossing folders, they were just too sharp and it cut through the parchment. So I couldn't use those. They won't be something I'll use for this. But let me just show you. We've got this is the back side. OK, and this is the front side and it went 12 deep with no issue whatsoever. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go through the tips and tricks again on when I use parchment paper, which we've done in a previous tutorial, but I think it's worth repeating because I think there's going to be a hot craze for these machines. Once you guys see how beautiful this cookie is and you're not having to hand pipe all this detail, you're going to go crazy and want one of these. And recently I saw someone post on one of the cookie groups that I'm in that they found at a shop called Tuesday Morning that they found a Sizzix machine, I think was the brand. If not, it was one of the brands similar to that for like 70 bucks. So you can't beat that if you want to start designing and creating your own background. And this in combination with using a little bit of airbrush in your sets, your set is just going to look like a million bucks. People are going to be just wowed by it. And you're going to get to use candy, glitter, paint, all of that, and spend your extra time leveling up your cookies in the final details. So this is what, what will end up being the top of the cookie. And the other thing this is good for you guys, if you want to create a design like this in the icing, and then you want to go back and pipe over top of it, like de added on details to give it a little 3D, designs like this, look for embossing plates that will allow you to do that. For instance, you could go back and add the hat and a puffy pom-pom after you've done your dry dusting and everything on here. You could just add that little bit of detail to your cookie and level it up even again. So we're going to use this large square that I have to do our snow people. Now, remember from a previous video, hey, Sheila, how are you? I hope everyone is doing well today. Hi, Marisol. How are you doing today? Um, I remember we discussed in the last video. Well, maybe you remember. If you saw the video, you might remember. This in particular... Um, I'm just using an older cookie. So my cookies normally don't have this, but it was some dough I had. I smushed it together, used a pizza cutter, cut some out. So if you want to get really particular with your cookies, remember we've already talked about using a zester or a grater to straighten up your sides. You totally can do that. I don't think you need to do that in this snow theme because the snow theme just organically lends itself to not being a perfectly squared off um, edges, say like when we do envelope cookies. Okay. So the other thing we talked about is that when you're using re-rolled dough, sometimes it pops up a little more in the center versus the edges. So I am going to be flipping my cookie over when we do this technique, because my edges are just barely, not even a 16th of an inch, but the edges are a little bit higher. So what that's going to do when I do a flood and fill is allow the icing when it smooths, it's going to gravity is going to take over and it's going to pull it towards that center because the center is lower. So it's going to be more likely that I will get a nice fill outline and fill on my cookie without it spilling over even once I add my parchment. Okay. And I'm using this super big cookie. I think this is, I think I cut the ones that I was using. Yeah, it's a four inch square. So this would be great with a plaque a four and a half or four inch plaque cutter. This would be beautiful on there. And you can see it's going to nicely accommodate this whole design. Okay. So let's slide that one over. And then I still have 11 more to go. But if I'm doing a bunch of January sets or 
Um, PYOs, this is great if you want to level up your PYOs without doing the black stenciling. If you learn how to do this, you can make your PYO cookies, use the parchment on it, and then still the, do the paint palettes, but you're not going to have to worry about the black running in any manner, whether you airbrushed it or whether you did stenciling, you're not going to have to worry about that coming into the designs when the kids are painting. A lot of times that upsets the kids when the black starts mixing with the colors, right? When the outline starts running. Hey, look at this great message. Um, yes, that will work. Just get yourself a set of new plates so that everything is only used with food. Keep your crafting stuff separate from your food stuff and you'll be good to go. And Becky is saying it was Tuesday morning and that Hobby Lobby had them as well for 65 to 75 for the Sizzix Big Shot. Now, I personally don't know anything about that machine, but I do know that Nancy thoroughly reviewed it in her parchment in her embossing parchment tutorial. So please check that out. So we're going to do this. And then I still have 11 left. So I could do all of these the night before. Flood them, get this on, pop them in the dehydrator just long enough to make sure everything is good. Although if I'm leaving them overnight, I don't normally pop them in the dehydrator. I just go ahead and leave them out. But I'm going to show you a few tricks to help with filling these embossed areas, right? Because what you don't want on a design like this is that concrete texture where you have a lot of air bubbles. That works really well if you're doing a concrete texture and you want the air bubbles and you want it to have that natural look, that's fine. But on a design like this, you may still have a few, but you want to try to limit it, okay? So I'll show you a couple of tricks for that. And then I've got my extra ones. And guys, I have a, a stencil box that I keep my stencils in. And I used that for this. And what I did was I just set up um, dividers. I had the same dividers I use for my stencils. I just created like winter theme, Christmas theme, because I literally went through 30 folders and about a thousand sheets of parchment this weekend, just playing to see what designs looked great. So we have this beautiful snow family in this one. It's just a sandwich size, um, might be a quart size Ziploc bag. I'll have to check that but I think it would also fit in a sandwich. And then we're gonna pull one of these beautiful snowflakes off. And we're gonna do that on one of our Christmas trees. This was from, or one of our trees. This is the homespun tree from our Christmas box. So you can use any tree you want. We just, most of us, or a lot of us rather that take the classes happen to have this cutter. This is another way you can use this cutter because I did tell you guys that we're buying boxes that what I was going to be doing was trying to incorporate any cutters that you got in your boxes into our two tutorial Tuesdays when we're not doing custom design sets so that we're reusing cutters that you already have to keep it easy. And this is also gonna be a great cutter for you guys to use and get ready to use for when we do our gnome garden series this spring. So we're gonna do one with that. I did wanna make sure that I kept these separate right from the beginning um, because I did so many, it really got out of control around here. And then we're gonna use our other tree. It's still a tree, so it counts as another design for us, but same tree. Um, and we're gonna do this tree look with the snowflakes on it for this one, okay? So let's pop this in the bag. I'm not going to be demoing how to use the actual machine. I want to refer you back to Nancy for that or people that already embossed. You've probably, probably already got that figured out. Just make sure you're using a new set of plates and embossing folders so that you're keeping everything food safe. Okay. Um, and this is all of my pieces that I had ready for cookie con. Look at all these that I have to have ready. So excited about cookie con. And you guys, feeling so much better this week after my booster shot last week. Thank goodness I'm through that because that knocked me down for about four days. But, you know, that's okay. I'd rather have it and be safe. Oh, you're very welcome, Cynthia. Very, very welcome. And C Kathy is saying um, she must own one. She says she loves the big shot, so she must be endorsing that one. I don't have that one, so I can't tell you a lot about it. But I know that other cookiers will all send us on the right path. 
Um, Paula just ordered the big shot and some folders. It is so much fun. And four hours had gone by. I had made like over 50 designs, 12 of each. And it was like, I hadn't even started yet. It was so funny. My husband's like, are you going to do that all day? And I was like, well, I'm going to go till I run out of parchment paper or embossing folders. Cause I want to see what I already own looks like. <laughs> so that's so fun. So Paula just ordered big shot and some folders. We want to know how it goes, Paula, when you get that. Um, she's also telling us that Zulily, which is an online ordering site, had them cheap if you'd be willing to wait. Um, Becky is saying she has both machines and both are great. And I know Nancy really liked the Sizzix because I think she was saying that it was easier to um, easier to put the folders through and do between 10 and 12 parchment sheets at a time. And I also want to tell you this. I'm not planning on selling these on my website. However, if you purchase an Easter box, okay, the ones that go on sale this Saturday, if you purchase an Easter box, if you manage to get one of those boxes, hi, Sarah, how are you doing today? I'm so glad you popped in for a visit. Um, if you purchase one of this Saturday's Easter box and you want to get a dozen of the snow people or the snowflakes, I could easily have those ready to go in your boxes for shipment on Tuesday. I just have to figure out what the additional cost would be. And I'll have you pay for those separate because I don't want to slow you down when the boxes go on sale because the boxes sell out so fast. I don't want to do anything that deters. But if you're if you snag one of the boxes this weekend, I'm happy to make a few and just get separate payment for that and tuck them in those boxes so you don't have to add any shipping, okay? Hey, Sally, how in the world are you? Hi. Hello. Um, class, uh, hold on just a second. I don't have the paper in front of me, but it is in the last video we did. So the boxes go up for sale on the 29th. If you guys will jot this down. They go up for sale on the 29th. I expect to have them shipped by February 1st. And I am almost positive our class is going to be a Saturday afternoon virtual from 4 to 7 p.m. Eastern on February 19th. Does that sound right? Is anybody on here, one of my admins on here that can verify that date? Hello, hello. Is this Maggie? Maggie, I think you're in Hawaii for a wedding, right? How are you doing today? I hope it's been kind to you there and that you are thawing out and having a good time. All right. Becky is also saying, you guys, Sizzix has several folders and die cuts on sale today. So check that out because, you know, Hobby Lobby doesn't do. Um... Oh, Sizzix. Becky, do they need to go to the Sizzix site? I was about to tell them to go check out Hobby Lobby. And uh, Nicole is saying, yes, it's definitely the 19th. You're feeling faint. <laughs> I bet he did because this machine is so easy. Now, can I say this, please? Please hear me when I say this to you. A lot of you are super afraid of 3D printers and Cricut machines because there's technology, quote unquote, technology involved. This is you, the machine, and the crank handle. Like, you can figure this out. And there's been so many improvements on the, this, these machines that most of the machines right on the plates that run through the machine is a listing of how to stack your plates. And there's, uh, there's four different machines and our people in our group have spoken up for four different machines. So I'm sure as soon as they try it, we could easily put a folder together to tell you the difference between using regular embossing folders or 3D folders and how to stack it and which, which things to use if you're really worried. But honestly, it is so relaxing to use those machines for making cards, for doing this. Like I was so happy because I used to love to make cards, but then I just never had any time to do them anymore. And I couldn't get rid of the machine because it was one of my favorites. So, so let's see. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Um, let's, okay. So let's talk about this and then we'll go to the next thing. Okay. So a die cut is the little metal outlines that you can use and use them with just wafer paper. And so you have your wafer paper that you can use on cookies, right? A folder is actually, do I have anywhere I can reach them? I don't have any handy, but I'll bring that to the tutorial tonight and show you. But the folder is, is actually a plastic folder hinged at the top. It comes together. You put the parchment in here and then run it through the machine and it creates this. Okay. All right. So um, 
that'll help a little. And I also want to tell you, I want to give a shout out to Debbie at, you guys, there's so, so many names are so similar. It's crazy. So Intricate Edibles is the company that you can buy the stuff already done. So shout out to them. Nancy Westfall at the Colorful Cookie in her group is the group that has a very lengthy tutorial. And I don't mean very in a bad way. I mean, she is a great teacher. It's got a lot of information and it's in-depth. She has an in-depth tutorial on creating this parchment technique with several different machines. So definitely check that out. Um, but I want to give a shout out to Debbie at Icing Images in Winchester, Virginia, because if you do have a Spellbinder machine, she has food safe die cut items on her site and they're really inexpensive. So you definitely should jump on and check that today at Icing Images. OK. All right. Get that cricket out of the box. Now, Myra sent us a sent me a cricket to start using for you guys. And I paid and took Nancy's class at CookieCon last time, but I just don't feel confident enough to actually show that yet. But I am working on creating stencils where I can just create the stencil designs for our cookies. And then they can be in the coffee shop site so that those of you that have cricket machines, and it would be cricket because I don't know anything about silhouette or own a silhouette. Um, we could put that in there so you can pick up those folders if we start to use a lot of those. And I wanted to be able to make them for your kits. Let's see. Now get you ladies, get these, especially these embossing machines, get them out of the box. They're so much fun. I love this group too, Rebecca. Thank you. <laughs> 730 in the morning. Oh, that's so fun at the wedding. This is Maggie. I'm sure it's Maggie. Let's see. Um, now I tend to use more punches to make my wafer paper pieces because the punches can get you down to half inch bits, um, for embellishments. Cause I don't usually like to cover my whole cookie, but like for butterflies or flowers or Easter eggs, things like that. Hearts. I love to use that. Yes. Icing image. So icing images in Winchester, Virginia. Um, oh, so Hobby Lobby has this spellbind. Mimi, do you know if that's the big one or the mini? There's one that holds a full size um, folder, a full size bed. It's like eight and a half. And then the thing is 11 inches that goes through it. Uh, and there's a mini that's the smaller size. Do you know if which one it is? Maybe you can drop a link in. And wafer, and yes, Cricut machines can also cut the wafer paper. All right, so let's jump into what we're doing. I saved this to do on line with you so you could see it. Okay. Um, because icing is going to be your nemesis as always in cookie decorating the icing. Um, Mimi is saying it's the larger Becky's saying the larger one is on sale. Now I really like the larger one because you're going to be able to use it on bigger sheets of parchment paper, which will speed up the process. If you have a big cookie order, for instance, one of the embossing folders I have is like seven inches by seven inches and it's wood grain. So I could take white on the roll parchment paper, take a bunch of sheets, fill that, you know, trim it to the size, of course, fill that and run that through and then cut it into small bits instead of having to hand crank that machine, right? So just to be clear again, it is not my intention to start selling these pieces. I really have enough on my plate right now with the um, with the baking I'm doing at the store and the traveling and teaching that I'm doing currently. I, I've got more than enough on my plate. But for this particular design, if you guys like it tonight and you happen to be one of the people that gets an Easter kit so that it can go right in those boxes and there's no additional shipping or anything involved, I would be happy this weekend to crank out some more as long as my reorder of parchment paper arrives. So guys, this is about three day old white icing that was thinned. Okay. So I wanted you to take a look at this. I'm going to remix it. Don't ever try to do this parchment paper with icing that's been in the bag that you haven't taken the time to take out and stir because if you do the, um, if there's any little pools of liquid that have separated from the icing part of the cookie, it's going to ruin your design. You're going to get a pocket. You're going to get an air hole. Like it just, and it's not just necessarily these embossed things, but anytime you do the parchment technique. So what I wanted you to see is, can you see how it's running and it's in a ribbon form? Okay. 
So we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to rebag this really quickly. It's thoroughly mixed. This is my preferred consistency to use because it helps eliminate air bubbles. Um, let me pull this on camera just so you guys can see it. You know, I have a little bit of trouble with my hand, my piping hand. So I use a champagne glass lined with a medium size tipless icing bag and I fill into that so that I can't overfill it so it's not too much weight for my hand. So let's get this one up. Someone asked me about this the other day because they saw that I was using a lot of bag clips. Here's my bag. I just give it a twist like this. Okay. If I were doing DIY kits, this would be the proper amount. So it's already measured. If you use one of these glasses, it would already be measured for you to um, do three, three different colors this size. And then I would be using my tape gun machine to seal off the end. But when I'm at the house and I'm working in the studio, I've just got bag clips in here. So I twist it to give it a little extra coverage, make it thicker. And then I pop my click on my clip on. And then because we're on camera, I just trim this top. Okay. Just to keep it lively. And you can see this is definitely a flood consistency outline. Okay. Oh, Barbara, we'll catch you later. We will catch you a little bit later. All right. So I think we're going to go with just this one for today. And then if I don't like how this turns out tonight, I'll demo a second consistency for you. I hope that makes sense. I was going to show you another trick, but I think for the detail level of these, this is really the only icing that's going to work. So let's get going with this. What we're going to do right now for part one of our two-part tutorial today. Hey, Lori, how are you doing? What we're going to do now. Um, oh, and there's going to be a link on the Facebook page that will be live as soon as the video is over that takes you right to the machine that's on sale, okay? Um, could use big one on big Priscilla. What, what to re reword that question for me? Help me. Um, the big one, I just like it because I can do larger sheets of parchment at a time. So larger cookies, but the most embossing folders are about four and a half inches wide. Okay. Oh, and also guys tonight, I had to order a new one of these. So since I did, we're going to talk about this tonight. So tune in for this. Okay this handy dandy tool, this embossing heat gun. I'm going to show you how to use that in case you do not have a dehydrator or um, a tabletop fan. We're going to talk about that tonight too. I'm not going to do it this morning. We'll do it tonight. So this morning, what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pull out a dehydrator tray because I wanted to demo to you how to actually do these. And I only had so many cookies so I am going to be putting mine into the dehydrator when we finish up our class. So I'm just going to create it right on the tray so that I don't have to move it and risk bumping it or getting more air bubbles. Okay, so what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do is combine two techniques to try to eliminate the air bubbles. Hmm, that's really odd. I had paper towels. And, oh, I think the roll fell behind. Okay, so we'll just use this little scrap, okay? So I've trimmed the tip of my bag. And what I like to do, I know that my cookie is going to cover most of this design. It's rather large, right? So if I want to get really fancy smancy, we can if you guys want to. I think I probably should show you this just for the purposes of you doing this in the future. Um, let's see. Let's just take a quick mark, just mark a little mark around the cookie. And we'll go ahead and trim our parchments. This is useful if you're doing a precision cookie. It's not necessary really for what we're doing today. But since this video is probably going to get watched a lot because you guys are going to love this parchment technique, um, I'm just going to show you that was a food safe edible ink marker. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim it down to the size. I already knew that I where I wanted my design to be on the cookie. So you'd have to figure out your design, lay your cookie on top, and then mark it. But for what we're about to do, I think this might be the easiest way to show you what's about to happen. So remember, I flipped my cookie upside down just in case there's any hump, right, on this side, right? We don't want it to run off, and we don't want to have to really bear down on the edges when we're applying that. So in this case, I'm going to flip it over, and I can tell it has a little bow to it. It was older dough, second roll. 
So you can see that. Let's set that to the side. Well, actually, let's do that first. That might be easier for you guys to see. So you're going to want to work cookie, parchment, put them together. Now, if you're doing concrete texture, some of this that I'm about to demo for you is not necessary. You would just put your icing on the cookie. You'd crumple your parchment paper like we've done in previous videos, and you'd put it down and you'd move on. You'd be done. OK, but we're doing a pretty intricate a pretty intricate parchment piece for today. OK, so I'm going to outline and flood the cookie. It is a nice consistency icing, but by outlining and flooding it first, it's going to give gravity time to do the work. And don't skip, skimp on the icing, okay? You don't want so much that it runs off the cookie, but you don't want it to be thin when you're trying to do a technique like this. It can't be paper thin. But what's going to happen is I should, other than a quick shake and setting this back down, I should not have to take a scribe or a boo-boo stick to this. So you could see that you could, with planning, move quickly through this. This is also going to be a beautiful cookie if you did large cookies like this and you wanted to sell them separately in boxes for different holidays, leave enough flat area on this where you could personalize it. This would be great for that. All right. So let me give it a quick shake. Shake, shake, shake. That really should be all it takes. It's settling down. Let's set it off to the side. Then we're going to come over here. And because there's all these little areas, it's usually very difficult to use the right consistency icing with something that has this intricate of a design and not get the air bubbles, okay? So something that I found works for me, it may not work for you. Somebody may even have a better way to do this. But what I have found that works for me is just to put some additional icing on here, not as much as you would put if you were icing the cookie, but some additional, okay? And then I just take a food safe brush and I brush it to make sure the icing is down in those crevices. Everywhere that I want to make sure that detail shows up, I want to make sure there's icing already down in those divots. Okay, and I'm just using a brush. You could use an offset cake spatula. You could use a scribe. I just found that the brush on something this intricate is, is the best. I prefer to use the scribe because I can wipe it off faster and keep moving. And the reason it's helpful to trim the parchment is so that I don't put a bunch of icing beyond the borders of where I want it to be on the cookie I'm applying it to. All right, so I'm going to flip this and show it to you. But basically what I've done is just tried to evenly distribute the icing, making sure that it's brushed down into those grooves. OK, now in a second, I'm going to pull some of this icing off. We don't need it all because we're about to attach this to the top of the cookie. So let me set the brush over there. I'm gonna flip this and show it to you because what it's accomplishing, and I need a, a boo-boo stick or a thingamajini to actually pick it up. What we're accomplishing is making sure we're not gonna have those air gaps like what we get for concrete texture. So you can see all of the area is full. My I've done this quickly, so my icing is still wet. And I'm basically just going to peanut butter and jelly sandwich this together, right? I'm going to let that wet icing go to the icing that's on the cookie. And I'm going to very gently make sure that the parchment is turned down where the two sets of icing marry. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. However, let me say this about that. If you do put too much pressure and the icing oozes out the side, leave it, let it dry and come back later, especially on a cookie like this. Like I would start practicing on a cookie that has straight borders. It's going to be a little easier for you. Um, come back and use your zester and just clean up the icing after it's fully dry. You can just give that a quick sanding with your zester. But you can see on camera, you're not seeing any air bubbles, right? Because the icing's all up in, in the crevices already. And then the main body of the icing was on the cookie, which we had allowed to already level out. So I am just ever so gently running from center to outside edge. I'm going to go all the way around just to make sure I haven't left any air pockets. Because if you don't do this part where you're making sure that the icing that's on the parchment touches the icing on the cookie, I have had times where I peeled it off and a very thin layer that was attached to the parchment was not attached to the wet icing on the cookie. And so that whole area had no design on the cookie. So you don't want to skip this step just because you think it looks finished. You want to really kind of just feel it 
make sure it's in there. That extra step is just to help you on an intricate design to pull out the air bubbles, okay? To make sure you have as few of those as possible. All right, and then I'm just gonna leave this sit. It's fully attached all the way around. We're gonna let that sit there and we're gonna move on to the next design. Now the next design, I'm not gonna do that additional safety step of brushing it into the groove because it's this cool snowflake and flourish design. Um, so I want you to see what happens if you don't do that step. And we will have a few air bubbles with this design because it's small and intricate. So this way you're gonna get a good view of everything that's going on. So let's go ahead and outline and flood this cookie. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Um, I think I'm caught up with questions, but if I missed a question, I'm not seeing any on the screen right now. So if I did miss a question, please put it over in the comments again. Please make sure you say hello in the comments and where you're watching from, even if you only pop on for a second. You never know the day, what the day is going to bring and if I'm going to have something that somebody sent for a giveaway. Hi, Jeannie. How are you? So please pop something over in the comments so that if I do a drawing, you didn't miss out just because you didn't say hello, okay? Cindy was organizing cookie cutters yesterday, so she's just said in her Facebook feed she had to make another Costco trip. I almost guarantee you that she went for boxes because she's getting, everyone is so inspired at the beginning of the year to get their cookie cutters organized. Okay, so this is just the embossing folder that had snowflakes and then the flourishes that look like blowing wind. This shows up so beautiful. Tonight, we're going to be buffing it with a little bit of frosted blue diamond dust, and I'm going to find my coordinating blue um, in Sterling Pearl before tonight's live feed. And I'm just going to be dusting it with this fun sprinkle brush that I have. It's really soft and it just does the trick perfectly on these cookies. So guys, I'm not putting this down in any kind of particular pattern, although I do know that I want to see, I want you to be able to see tonight some of the flourish, the flourish blowing wind pieces and some of the snowflakes. So since it's wider at the bottom, at the bottom part, I'm going to try to put the flourish, flourish down. And I start on one corner. This typically helps me with the air bubble issue. And I roll it towards the other corner. Kind of like how I work when I roll out my fondant mats. If you guys have taken any classes, then you've seen how I work from one side to the other, pe almost peeling back and allowing the item to fall out. Now this, I'm not seeing any air bubbles, but that doesn't mean there aren't any, but I'm not seeing any. That was the other reason that I really liked working with the brown Zenlogi parchment paper because I, with a white icing underneath, it was much easier for me to see if I had air bubbles or not, if I had the um, a different color on top versus using a white parchment paper. I hope that makes sense. And I could really see how far I was pushing the icing out now, if you do get air bubbles and you knowingly have air bubbles, a needlepoint scribe, a cake fondant needlepoint uh, or fondant needle, <laughs> I call it a scribe because I use it all the time. I like how thin the point is, but this is actually a fondant needle to let air hole out of air holes out of fondant without making a big hole on the cake when you're layer covering them with fondant. Hey, Linda, how are you? So if you have this, it is possible with the finest needle that you have to poke a hole and let that air out. That sometimes works. But I think on this one, we're going to be in pretty good shape. So let's slide this one over to the side as well. And we're going to use our last cookie. Again, it was older dough that I rolled out just to use out for tutorials. So it does have that slight hump in the middle. Hello, hello. Um, let's see how much icing I have left. I don't know if I'm going to be able to flood the whole cookie, so I might just do an area so that you can see this tree on here, but we'll see. I might have enough, and I might have another bag over here that we won't have to stop and re-spread this. I'll see if I can use that one, too. If this is what it's like at 2 in the morning when you take an order that's a little bit more than you wanted to take, right? And then you're, like, down to that last cookie, and you're like, can I stretch that icing? Can I get it on? Can I do a whole cookie? Is there enough? And you just keep milking the bag, hoping that you're going to squeeze enough icing out. You've all been there. If your team no sleep, you've been there. It's happened to you. I know it has. <laughs> all right. 
Let's see about this little bag. If there's enough in here that I can use. This is a thicker icing. So this is not my preferred icing, but perhaps, perhaps for purposes of this tutorial, you guys will enjoy this because you'll get to see the difference of what happens with these. We'll just use this bag up today too. And tonight, guys, we'll be peeling the parchment off. We're going to be dry dusting. We're going to add a little diamond dust. And I'm going to give you some other hints about diamond dust for doing this particular project. I didn't want to muddy the waters this morning with what we're doing right now, but I'm going to give you some cool hints tonight. So please make sure you tune in at seven so you don't miss that, because I do think you will very much enjoy that. Now, I'm just going to give this a quick shake. Okay. Bye, Julie hope your day goes well. And I'm going to try to work these two consistencies together. Not that concerned about it because it's a very outdoorsy design. It's okay if it comes out rough. It's trees and snowflakes. So I really, I'm going to go for these two treetops on my cookie. And then tonight I'll just use some thick brown icing to make my tree stump on both of my trees. And let's just give this a quick gentle. Can you see gentle, gentle? Because I don't want to push the icing way out. Should I push the icing way out so I can show you how to clean it up tonight? You guys let me know over in the comments. If you want me to, I'll give it an extra squeeze on this one. And then I'll show you what you can do tonight, either with an X-Acto knife, if you have to get really precise, or with a zester. Hey, April. Let's see. Yeah, I'm still streaming at full full bars and not not freezing at all on my phone that I have off to the side. So it's probably just people's internet right now. It's crazy with our with the weather, right? All right. You do want to see it squeezed out. Okay, so I'm intentionally going to squeeze extra out on this side. Okay. Oh, it's so hard to do it too cuz once you get used to trying not to do it, then it just feels like you're doing something terrible. But let's put extra icing out on this side so it'll definitely be off the cookie. And I'll show you tonight how to clean that up, okay? All right. Well, that's it for our morning session of Two Tutorial Tuesday. I think I'm caught up with the questions. You guys feel free to post anything in the comments and I'll check it out. I'm going to be doing some design work this afternoon, so I will be in the cookie studio. I'll try to keep up with you. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you for everybody who donated stars today. As always, you guys are so generous. I can't believe it. And there will be cookie snack attack cookie education system cards for these, but they won't be up until tomorrow or the next day because I want to photograph these exact cookies so that you know that I didn't cheat and do a bunch of other steps before I posted your pictures, especially on something like this, especially before you're about to spend money on machines, okay? I want you to really see what this looks like before you decide to make that investment. And then I'm gonna get on the Facebook page in the Cookie Snack Attack group and the Seriously Sweet page, and I'm gonna drop affiliate links in for you for the parchment paper, for some embossing folders that I really recommend, and for my Grand Caliber machine, okay? Thank you so much, and I will talk to all of you this evening. I hope you have a fabulous day. Go be sparkly. I'll see you guys later.